Hey guys, so today's video is basically more of a beneficial video for um, you guys. Basically, I'm going to be answering the question that I get from a lot of people, which is, uh, I see these parts on your robot and on uh, other YouTubers' robot, you know, like on other teams' robots that, you know, post YouTube videos, but I don't know where to get those parts because we didn't get those in our kit. Well, um, I'm going to be, you know, talking about some of the crucial parts on our robot this year, and basically, you know, I'll have a picture of them, what they're called, and also I'll be dropping a link so you guys can order those parts if you want. Um, remember, at 300 subscribers, we're going to be doing a giveaway, so if you want to be a part of that, make sure that you comment in my videos, you subscribe to my channel, and also that you ask questions, and we'll get you an entry into that giveaway. So with that said, um, there's a couple crucial parts. Let's go over them. So the first one is this um, this basic parts package. So uh, again, all these all these uh, pictures I post and all these parts I talk about are basically packages like of different uh, types of parts. And you can actually um, I'll have them all in the description below. This is what I'm going to be calling them. So this one is basically a bag of parts, and this is what it comes with. It comes with a bunch of axles, a bunch of you know different uh, you know ways to uh, maneuver your axles, like 45 degree angles, things like that. The reason this is beneficial is the kit um, that, you know, the EV3 kit and the expansion kit, they come with axles, but they don't come with that many, and uh, they don't come with that many sizes. So it's great to have all different sizes for different applications on your robot. Um, and then also the rubber bands that it comes with are uh, really great, so I would recommend those. So that's um, something I recommend that you guys get as a team if you have the budget for it. Um, gears. So uh, the, here's, here's some pictures of uh, the gears that we use on our robot. You can see that like um, we use plenty of gears. Uh, we have a huge bag full of gears. Um, not all of those came in the kit, obviously. The kit only comes with a couple of them. So we had to buy a lot of extra gears. So we bought Basically, we bought a bunch of gear sets. So the, the set I'm going to be advertising in my description is the one in the picture. It comes with basically a, a bunch of different types of the gears, like a, a bunch of variants, and it comes with a couple of each. It's pretty cheap, and um, you know those are like the the ones that we use pretty often. So uh, hopefully, uh, if you wanted to get into gears, you would be using the the same type of gears and this would this package would benefit you guys again uh, on the left in the picture is the package that I'll have a, a link on and on the right is some of the applications that we use on our robot this year on our attachments um, so these are probably the some of the, the parts that I get asked most about is the panel on the left and the chassis frame on the right. So I know the kit comes with the chassis frames, a couple of them, but it really doesn't come with many. Um, we probably have used over 30 this year on our FLL robot and our attachments and the panels we've used, as you can see from this picture in the middle of our attachment, we've used a bunch of panels. So the panels are, um, they do not come in the kit. The panels don't come in the kit. They're a little bit longer than the chassis frames and they're really smooth on the outside. So panels are really great for like look at having a clean look of your robot. Also they're like, um, because they're not as rigid as the chassis frame, they're smooth on the outside. The panels tend to be a lot more uh, great when it comes to friction. So like if you're dragging something, the panels are really the better option because they're they're smooth and they don't have as much friction as the chassis frame would. Um, the panels, like I said, also are longer, so in some applications you would want to use those. Uh, both of these options, though, they really provide a lot of support on your robot. If you're planning on building a box-style robot, these two uh, parts will actually make it a lot easier than manually building each wall and each piece individually. These parts uh, allow you to build it a lot easier and they kind of just snap in place and you can stack them together which even provides a lot easier of a way to build a, a box style robot. Um, so on the left here are the 3x3 three three, 4 pin connectors. Um, so these actually I think are a very underrated piece. So the the 3x3 three three, uh, with 4 pin connectors we've probably used over a hundred of them. Um, not this year alone, but in the past two years, we've probably used over 100. The The main thing is a lot of teams just see this and they, they see that it just looks like a weird part, so they just end up disregarding it and thinking that it's useless or something. Well, these pieces actually allow you to bend your beams. So, like, if you have a, a regular beam from the FLL Technics, uh, you can actually bend it 90 degrees, and this can provide a lot of support structure. Um, so like if, uh, if you're building a box, for example, you can use four of these, one in each corner, and you can build a beam box, and that'll allow you to, like, uh, it, it'll have a lot of strength with it, 
and you know that's kind of how we build a lot of our our parts with these uh, three by three four pin connectors because they uh, allow you to build in like squared shapes and uh, with squared shapes you end up getting a lot of strength out of it so we use we use those all the time so um, I think those are underrated but um, once you start using them it's one of those things where like um, you kind of just don't stop. So once you learn how to use them and you use them a lot and they become a normal thing uh, like they do on my team, then we just use them all the time. We use them for like extremely often. Um, like I said, we've probably used over a hundred in the past two years. Um, on the right here, I have the beam set. So this is basically, I did a little bit searching on Amazon and found a set that comes with a bunch of different rails and different lengths and a bunch of different beams that um, could really benefit you. So a lot of these are kind of like, um, you know, pieces that uh, we use on our robot and a lot like the, the right angle beams and uh, even the straight ones of different sizes we use often. So the beam set is kind of great because it's a pretty cheap set and it just comes with a bunch of parts that you you guys will use um, on your FLO robot. We use all these parts very often and it's it's a pretty great set so that's why I, uh, I put this in my my video today because it's a really great set. So racks. So racks is um, they these parts did not come in the kit they there's a very a uh, version of it that comes in the kit but it's not like custom racks so basically um, these, the ones that come in the kit basically have a, uh, they have a preset length and they have like peg holes on the outside. They're kind of like predetermined, you can't like adjust the size or anything, so that can, that's why most teams don't use them. However, these racks that I have here on our arm, um, by the way, this is the arm of our attachment. You can see it in action if you want to see, uh, look back in one of my previous videos, you'll see this in action. So basically, the racks you can buy in sets of four. And you basically could just buy as many, uh, you know, you can make any custom length arm you want. You just stack them over each other. As you can see, the gray and the black, those are separate. You kind of just add as many pieces as you want to make the length of your arm. And, uh, you know, they're really customizable. You can make any size arm. You can make um, any size rack. And uh, you, you just buy the ones that you need. So they're, those are pretty sweet. We've used them for the past two years, and we definitely couldn't have done the missions that we uh, have done without those racks. So those are pretty critical to some of our performance with our robot. So the other thing I want to talk about is not only parts, but how things like uh, additional uh, objects can help with your FLL season as a team. So we're going to be talking about the EV3 battery and brick and how these having an extra of each can actually benefit your performance in the season in robot game and also benefit your team. So the EV3 brick, uh, if you have one of them, it's really hard to, you know, uh, share it around, you know, to the different team members and the different students because, like, once you have your robot built, say you have your robot and your attachment already built, um, if, you know, now you're handing the robot to the programmers to code, um, you know, now the, the other students can't really work on the robot because the programmers have to code it. So if you have an additional brick and adi an additional battery, you can actually have the other students, what we do is we actually have two, um, like I said, the robot, and then we have an ex extra brick. We have the other students work on prototyping, uh, you know, the, the future missions that we're going to be doing while uh, some of our students are working on coding the competition robot. With the extra brick, um, we can just, you know, clip in some motors and then they can actually uh, build their prototypes out of Legos and they can test it uh, away from having to actually grab our robot, you know, our competition robot and take away the time that the programmers need. Uh, the other thing these benefit is not only can they just directly connect it to, you know, their, their attachment to a motor or something, but this way they can prototype faster because they don't have to build, you know, they don't have to um, build their attachment onto the robot. Uh, the competition robot. They can easily just attach their uh, a motor onto the attachment, the prototype, the attachment prototype, and then they can just you know spin the the motor and see if you know the general concept works. So I highly recommend getting an extra set of both of these because if you have it, you can uh, you know eat, uh, move a lot faster throughout the competition season. Um, the other thing is, uh, you wouldn't believe, talking about the battery, you wouldn't believe how many teams I know that have EV3 bricks, but didn't realize that the ba a rechargeable battery existed, so they don't have one. Um, if you get the EV3 brick, I highly recommend getting the battery, the rechargeable battery, because the EV3 brick without it takes six AA batteries, 
and when you're using your EV3 every week, you're going to end up having to buy a lot of AA batteries. So get the rechargeable battery, save yourself some time from going to the store and picking up AA's, and also save yourself some money from having to keep buying AA batteries. Just get the rechargeable. Uh, so I think that really that's a key part to our robot performance is you know having an extra set of EV3 brick and EV3 battery because we can prototype a lot faster and we can also multitask. We can you know work on prototypes while we're working on programming the competition robot. The medium and large motor. So if you plan on getting an extra EV3, then you probably want to get some extra motors so you can prototype and you know uh, work the method that I just talked about. So you would want to get some extra large motors and some extra medium motors for that purpose. Um, depending on what your team uses, the medium motor might, may or may not be good for your team. For example, our team uses just four large motors, so we wouldn't buy a, an extra medium motor because we're going to be prototyping with large motors because that's what's actually on our competition robot. But the medium motors are smaller, and they're pretty fast, so they could benefit your team if you plan on using the medium motors. So you might want to get some of those instead of the larges if uh, you know your team uses the medium motors on your robot. So those help uh, you know prototype. Even if you don't have the EV3 brick itself, even if you have like just a large motor without any cable or connected to anything, uh, you can still build onto the motor your attachment, and that way you know you can get like mounting points figured out and things like that, and it's a lot easier. So we have some extra motors so kids can just build on top of those. So here's the three sensors. Um, the color sensor, the gyro sensor, and the ultrasonic sensor. These are what they look like. And uh, again, I'll have some links in the description that you can purchase them at. Um, it's like uh, you've probably seen, but I'll go over them real quick. The color sensor scans different lines of or different colors on the field. So a lot of times teams use them to scan, you know, uh, lines on the field to follow them and line up for different missions, or to just scan the line on the field and know where they are, kind of thing. Um, the gyro sensor is used to measure angles. So teams will like. Um, Typically, you can see teams like type in like a, a turn 90 degrees. That way, their robot turns 90 degrees instead of actually having to manually go through their program and, and like you know adjust the rotations and tests and keep testing over and over until their robot turns 90 degrees with rotations. You can use the gyro sensor for that, and it's a, a lot faster. So that's what typically a lot of teams use a gyro sensor for. Ultrasonic sensor basically it acts as a radar sensor, so it sends out a uh, a a, um, a signal and then that signal bounces off whatever is in front of it and then returns a value into the ultrasonic sensor saying how far it is away. So basically you can use this, I've seen teams use this sensor to uh, make sure that they don't like collide with a mission or I've seen teams use this sensor to kind of like um, drive square against the wall uh, basically, if you've seen my video, we have wall rollers, um, but I've seen teams use the ultrasonic sensor to drive a, um, in p parallel to a uh, field wall without actually having to uh, ride or drive against the wall that themselves. That way they don't have any of the friction of the wall. They actually can use the ultrasonic sensor to just measure how far the wall is away at all times. So they can just uh, drive parallel to the wall, but they don't have the friction of rubbing against the wall. So that's a great um, you know, thing that you can use the ultrasonic sensor for. So the other things I want to talk about is the core set and expansion set. So if you have a core set, that's great, um, but you should consider the expansion set if you don't have it. The expansion set comes with basically a little bit more of everything um, that's not included in the core set. So it comes with a lot of parts, and the expansion set in itself for the amount of parts you get is not very pricey. Um, I think it's over it's like $120 or something, but it comes with like a huge chunk of parts and a lot of like different uh, parts that you'll be using in the NFL robot. The core set, um, so if your team, you if you're an FLL team, you have this already. However, I wanted to put this in here because some people, um, like for example, programmers on teams, um, like myself, when I was younger on an FLL team, I actually asked for Christmas for a, uh, a, a core set. Uh, and my parents got me one for Christmas, and I actually had a lot of fun uh, you know, just messing around, building my own creations, and, you know, learning from it on, along the way. So I, I was able to learn sensors, I was able to build a Rubik's Cube solving robot, and, you know, through those experiences, 
it was actually able to help benefit my performance in FLL because I was the programmer. So, I, uh, you know, when the season of FLL came around, I had a better understanding of how to use the sensors, when to use them, and how to program them because I had my own set. So if you're a parent on the team and you have a child, or, or if, yeah, if you're a parent of a child on the team and uh, you think your child's really interested in this type of thing, you might want to consider get them get uh, consider getting them a core set for Christmas or for, you know, just to uh, mess around with. I know a lot of people that I, I know, um, they have, you know, their, their children have core sets um, that they use for educational purposes uh, and things like that. So if your child's really interested in that kind of stuff, it might be worth considering because the core set's really beneficial. I learned quite a bit from it, and I was able to then turn around and help my FLL team from it. So with that, thank you for you know participating in this video. Again, remember that at 300 subscribers, we're going to be doing a giveaway. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, you know, interact in my videos, and I'll see you guys next time.